Did you know? It is estimated that around 0.5% of human brain tissue is now made of plastic. This is data from one of the latest studies on this topic, published on the National Institute of Health. The authors of the study examined several organs of dead bodies, including the kidneys, the liver, and the human brain, and found that while all of them contained microplastics, brain samples had on average 10 to 20 times more than other organs. It's pretty alarming. There's much more plastic in our brains than I ever would have imagined or been comfortable with," said Matthew Campen, a toxicologist and professor at the University of New Mexico and lead author of this study. The results came as a shock for researchers and people interested in this topic because 0.5% is a lot. Actually, the study describes the brain as one of the most plastic polluted tissues yet sampled. 0.5% of plastic by weight is unheard of. And what is worse, the amount of plastic per gram of tissue has dramatically increased over the last decade. We are speaking here of a 50% increase in 8 years. So why is this happening and what are the consequences? Microplastics are small plastic pieces less than 5 mm long. These tiny particles are broken down from plastic waste that has polluted basically the entire planet. Microplastics have been found from Arctic snow to isolated islands and from the summit of Mount Everest to the deepest oceans. The fact that microplastics are everywhere means that we humans are exposed to them. Microplastics can enter our bodies in three main ways. We can consume tiny plastic particles via food, water, and by breathing them. But what's the evidence? In 2019, a study found that people eat at least 50,000 plastic particles a year. Microplastics have been found in both bottled water and tap water, and these particles have been found to be literally blown across the world and raining down on cities, with studies finding plastic particles in the air in London, Virginia in the US, Hamburg in Germany, or Dongguan City in China, among others. As researcher and author Matt Simon puts it, Earth's atmosphere hasn't just grown saturated with plastic. Plastic is now a fundamental component of the air. But this isn't just another environmental crisis, it's a direct threat to human health. While it was initially unclear whether these microplastics were accumulating in our bodies or they were simply passing through, research now confirms that there is an accumulation of microplastics in various organs. In other words, the human body is widely contaminated by microplastics. Microplastics have been found in blood, lungs, grass milk, brains or placentas, among others. Now, all of these are concerning, of course, but I would like to focus on the human brain because this one is particularly vulnerable. As we saw before, microplastic levels in brain samples are much bigger than in other organs, and they are increasing. Now, the question is, how can you eat, breathe, or drink plastic particles and end up having them in your brain? Recent studies show that microplastics can breach the so-called blood-brain barrier. This is not really a barrier, it's more of a layer of cells that acts as a filter between blood vessels in the brain and the brain as such. This barrier normally prevents harmful substances from crossing from the bloodstream to the brain. But studies suggest that really small microplastics, also known as nanoplastics, can cross this barrier. And the fact that the blood-brain barrier can be crossed means that microplastics can enter our brain tissue and accumulate there. So this is a short explanation of why we have plastic particles in our brain, but what are really the consequences of that? The study mentioned in the beginning of this video also pointed to a concerning link. In the study, researchers looked at 12 brain samples from people who had died from dementia, including Alzheimer's disease. They found that this contained up to 10 times more plastic by weight than other samples. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that microplastics accumulation in the brain causes dementia. As we know, correlation doesn't mean causation. It could also be that dementia causes damage in the brain, which in turn increases concentrations of microplastics. But still, this is a concerning finding that needs more research. Beyond dementia, another concern is that at high levels, these microplastics in the brain might even block blood vessels. A very recent study, published in February 2025, show that if you feed microplastics to mice, these particles can block blood vessels. 
basically mimicking blood clots that can be fatal or disrupt brain functions. In fact, the study found that mice with high levels of microplastics in their brain even struggled to move, even struggled with basic physical tasks. Now, this is very recent and more studies will be needed. This was the first time ever that researchers came up with a system to track in real time fragments of plastic as they move through blood vessels. I'm sure more research will be done soon. This is an emerging field. But as Matthew Kampen, one of the main experts in the field, said, I never would have imagined it was this high. I certainly don't feel comfortable with this much plastic in my brain, and I don't need to wait around 30 more years to find out what happens if the concentrations quadruple. 